Welcome to Girls on the Run of Puget Sound Practice Partner Training. We are so thrilled that you chose to become a practice partner and we can't thank you enough for dedicating your time and help to empower girls in your community. A practice partner can be anyone, community member, teacher, parent, anyone 16 years of age or older that lives a healthy lifestyle and is committed to improving the lives of girls. The volunteer position is for those interested in providing support to Girls on the Run participants and coaches during the 10-week season at the Practice 5K and at the 5K celebration in May. You may be asked by a full-time coach to ensure sufficient coverage of practices. However, practice partners cannot facilitate the lesson unless coach training has been completed. You must commit to at least six sessions, but no more than 10 throughout the season. Practice partners should be ready and enthusiastic to play games, help or participate in the workouts and help to motivate girls. You may be asked by the full-time coaches to help set up, run or walk with the girls or implement positive behavior management, which we will discuss more later in the training. You may be asked to help implement a lesson which may include gathering materials, setting up, ensuring girls' safety, encourage and motivate girls throughout the session, which may include participating in games and workouts. Be attentive to girls and maintain a partnership with coaches throughout the lesson, including discussing team issues before or after an attended session. Practice partners must be 16 years or older, have completed the application background check and online training, and attend at least six, but no more than 10 sessions throughout the season. Our coaches have gone through extensive training and need to be the main point of contact for our girls and their families. Having practice partners that attend more than 10 practices per season becomes confusing to our teams. If you think you would like to attend more than 10 practices, becoming a volunteer coach might be a better fit. Now let's go over our spring 2020 Girls on the Run season. The season begins the week of March 2nd and ends the week of May 18th. The 5K takes place on Sunday, May 17th at Renton Memorial Stadium. The exact time will be determined. Your team meets twice a week for 90 minute sessions. Each site picks their own days for practice. So check with your sites, site liaison or your full time coaches if you don't know when your team meets. There are just a few things you need to do before the season begins in March. Complete your training, which you are doing right now. Communicate your schedule of which days you plan to attend practice with the coaches at your site. If you have not been connected with the coaches at your site yet, please contact us and we will connect you. You are a valuable part of your Girls on the Run team and your coaches and girls will rely on you and look forward to your attendance. And finally, save the date for the end of the season 5K. Now let's talk about some Girls on the Run core values. At Girls on the Run, we strive to recognize our power and responsibility to be intentional in our decision making. We embrace our differences and find strength in our connectedness. We express joy, optimism, and gratitude through our words, thoughts, and actions. We nurture our physical, emotional, and spiritual health we lead with an open heart and assume positive intent, and we always stand up for ourselves and others. As a practice partner, you cannot facilitate the Girls on the Run curriculum directly, but it is still important for you to know the flow of the Girls on the Run lessons. Let's go over briefly what to expect at practices. Each lesson for Girls on the Run flows in the exact same way, but has a new topic or main idea. Each lesson will include topics such as inner beauty, compassion, or how to choose friends. Here's what this lesson structure looks like. First, Girls Are You Ready? This will include an informal discussion, usually about the topic taught at the previous lesson. Getting on board is an introduction to that day's lesson and will include an activity to help familiarize the girls with the topic. Stretch and strengthening is exactly what it sounds like. We're getting the girls ready to get moving. Warm up, which is an activity relating to the topic of the day to get the girls ready for their longer run. The workout, 
This is the physical activity portion of practice. It is based on time, not distance, to foster a mastery climate. We just want to see the girls moving forward during this part of the lesson. This can include running, walking, skipping, whatever keeps the girls engaged and moving. Processing and wrap up. This is a critical part of the lesson and can often be skipped if time is cut short. The allotted time should always be given to this part of the lesson. The coaches will review the lesson with the girls, discuss how it can be used in their lives, whether at home, school, or with friends, as well as fill out their lap goal sheets and identity cards. This portion also includes an energy award given to one of your Girls on the Run girls that exhibits goater behavior and honors them. Finish with the team's closing cheer. Girls, girls, girls on the run. Girls on the run is so much fun. Now let's talk about BPM. BPM represents the key themes that we want our volunteers to remember. Building relationships, positive, inclusive environment, and mastery climate. In the next slides, I will go over each one in more detail and the best practices we suggest coaches and practice partners use throughout the season. These best practices are meant to help you gain a better understanding of the girl's context and may require you to reflect on your own. Now we will explore how to build girls on the run style relationships with the girls on your team and how to facilitate relationships between the girls. Now let's talk about coach to girl relationship best practices. Observe and investigate. We ask questions instead of making assumptions. Reflect on your own identity. Greet girls by name. Having one-on-one -on -one conversation with the girls. The next video will help demonstrate a couple different scenarios where a coach has the opportunity to ask questions, help the girl problem solve, and encourage them to run with different partners. The workout is a great time to build relationships with the girls in less structured ways. So run some laps with the girls yourself so you can have some one-on-one -on -one time with them. Often, these moments allow girls to open up about sensitive personal issues that may be bothering them and gives coaches time to ask questions and connect. Let's look at two ways a coach uses that time. My mother is always late to everything. Like, I'm starting to think she doesn't even care about anything that matters to me. Hmm. Well, sounds like you need to ask for some help. Some support. Like, remember we've talked about getting support from other people? Who in your circle do you think that could help you out? I never really thought about that. Hey, Zoe, how's it going? How are you feeling? Um, not that very well. There oh. wasn't no space at the lunch table table to again. Oh no. Well how did that make you feel? Well my stomach was hurting ever since and I'm sad. Oh didn't that happen like last week I think? Yeah. Oh you know what? Let's make a plan. Okay. The workout is also a great time when girls can connect directly with each other. So be sure to encourage girls to run with different partners. The workout is a great. Now let's talk about some girl to girl relationship best practices. Be observant and aware of the dynamics between girls and their interactions with one another. Pair girls strategically. Foster new relationships. Create opportunities for girls to connect during practice and share your observations and ideas for fostering relationships between girls with your volunteer team. Throughout the season, it is important that we create an environment where girls feel safe to share, explore, and grow as individuals and as a team. We will discuss the strategies necessary to create a positive, inclusive environment. Some best practices for this environment include using intentional language. 
The things we say and don't say can unintentionally send messages to girls about not belonging, so it is mindful to be thoughtful with our language. Use self-reflection, ask, never assume, and keep the core values of girls on the run at heart. Assume positive intent from the girls, considering each core value can help you ensure that you meet the goal of a thriving girl and a thriving team. Some potential behavior challenges you may want to be prepared to face are girls not following directions, girls not listening to one another, teammates forming cliques or being exclusive, or girls not being engaged during practice. Let's watch this video to see some of this. While having rituals and structure in place can help eliminate a lot of chaos and disruption, you will have times when you need to address behavior. Here are a few simple practices for redirecting behavior with minimal disruption to the team. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about confidence, girls. Who knows what confidence means? What's confidence then mean, Maya? Proud of yourself. All right, anybody else have a definition or a thought about what confidence means? All right, girls, let's take a seat and get started today. Come on in. All right, thank you, Kimber. Thank you, Savannah and Carrington. Thank you, Jill. All right, girls, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Welcome to Girls on the Run this afternoon. Your first step in addressing behavior is to use one of these three techniques. When using one of these techniques, remember, your first goal is to address the behavior in a discreet way and to avoid disruption to the group. Additionally, addressing behavior is not just the job of one coach. All coaches need to be comfortable and willing to use these techniques to address behavior. As you saw in the first clip, having a coach address girls who were talking allowed the head coach to continue to give directions without disruption. Finally, remember that these techniques are meant to refocus the girls. They are not meant as punishment. If a behavior issue persists, additional action like engaging the girl in a one-on-one -on -one conversation may be necessary. If the techniques in the video don't work, a one-on-one -on -one interaction can help and may require a conversation with the girl's caregiver. If you need additional support with behavior challenges, please engage the site liaison or coaches at your site, council staff, parents or guardians, and or school personnel. You do not have to figure out solutions on your own. In many sports contexts, success is defined by competing with others and winning. This is a performance climate. At Girls on the Run, coaches do not focus on who's the fastest or smartest, but instead celebrate every girl's individual growth. With a mastery climate, coaches help girls learn new skills and stay motivated as they work towards their goals and help the girls to not only succeed at each lesson, but to also improve. Some mastery climate best practices are giving specific feedback to girls, helping girls set goals focused on their own individual improvement, reminding girls of how they have grown. You can ask girls, how did you do that to help them reflect on their effort and skill building, provide opportunities for girls to practice skills, and use TLC praise? Because giving specific praise can be difficult, a useful tool can be the TLC method. This stands for tell it, label it, celebrate it. You can see an example of TLC praise here. You can see that the coach explains what he or she observed, defines what made it unique or helpful, then is able to celebrate it. This is just a small way to let girls know things they are doing well in a very direct way. While we talked about building relationships, a positive, inclusive environment, and mastery climate separately, note that they rely upon each other and are equally important to each girl's experience. 
These essential elements will ensure that not only the girls on the team will have an amazing experience, but the coaches will as well. Now let's go over some of the Girls on the Run Puget Sound policies. Please do not facilitate the curriculum. That role is meant specifically for our trained Girls on the Run coaches. You can help them pass out materials and manage the group, but do not facilitate the lesson from the book unless you are acting as a sub for a coach, which should only occur in an emergency or last minute scenario. By signing a non-compete clause, you are agreeing that you will not distribute or copy our curriculum in any way. You signed this clause when you applied as a practice partner. In terms of transportation, Girls on the Run volunteers are not allowed to drive Girls on the Run participants from practices or to the 5K. Remember the rule of three during practices. Make sure that there are always at least two girls with one adult at a time if you have to split away from the team any time during practice. This is especially important for bathroom breaks. Please enforce the rule that only Girls on the Run volunteers are allowed to be at practices. We want to ensure that anyone at practice has been background checked for the safety of the girls, so please keep this in mind throughout the season. If parents or guardians want to participate in practices, they can help cheer girls on during the practice 5K. Girls must be signed in and out of practice. Coaches can take attendance on the Race Planner Attendance Tracker app on their smartphone, where they can also see the authorized pickups for girls. This is something that coaches may ask your help with. In terms of attendance, we ask that girls miss no more than four practices. Once girls have missed three, best practices include reaching out to her guardian and reminding them of our attendance policy. This is a coach's responsibility, but we ask your help in noticing girls who have been absent frequently. Please remember to wear appropriate clothes to practices. You will probably want to wear something you can comfortably be active in since your role as a practice partner is to engage with the girls either by running, playing games, participating in activities, or just cheering the team on. If you have any questions about your role as practice partner, please reach out to Noelle Abrams either via email, phone, or text. We are always happy to hear from our volunteers and help you out with the tips or advice. As a volunteer, you are doing so much for us and it is our priority to support you in the best way possible. There is no question too small to ask. Please keep our contact information on hand. We so appreciate you. Now take this pop quiz, email your answers to noelle at girlsrun.org for the chance to win a piece of Girls on the Run merchandise. Make sure you include your name and where you are volunteering. The question is, in the video addressing behavior issues, what is one way to redirect the attention of a Girls on the Run girl during the session? Email your answers and we'll put you in the drawing. Thank you so much for being such an important part of Girls on the Run Puget Sound. Our volunteers are so incredibly important to our mission to inspire girls to be joyful, healthy, and confident using a fun, experience-based curriculum which creatively integrates running. Have a great season.